الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم my dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I've been told to talk about uh, family, marriage and relationship in 20 minutes it's almost an impossible task but inshallah I'll do my best to be as brief as I can and I'll focus on one verse of the Quran and I try and see if we can weave together all the three elements that you've asked me to talk about. The verse of the Quran is as follows. Allah says in the Quran, and amongst his signs, that Allah has created you and has created a partner from amongst yourselves. Let us so that you can live with them in peace and tranquility. So Allah will put between the two mawadda and rahma, love and mercy. Inna fi dhalika la ayatil li qawm yatafakkaroon. There are signs for those who reflect. Brothers and sisters, the essence of this verse is in one word. And this one word defines the purpose of marriage, purpose of relationship, purpose of family. It's called Sakina. He says, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا I will come to this in a little while, but let me begin from the beginning of the verse. There are five key lessons we learn in this whole verse. Lesson number one, Allah is our creator. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ and amongst Allah's signs is that He has created you as well as created your partner. And He has created you and your partner from amongst yourselves. One profound lesson, my brothers and sisters, in the beginning. Allah made you and I. When Allah has made you and I, and if you accept Allah has created me, Allah has created your partner to be, or your partner, your wife, your husband, you will not look at your partner to seek faults. Because you don't go around looking faults in Allah's creation, do you? We don't. There are no faults in Allah's creation. Allah has created all of us. In the best of forms, as He says in Surah Al-Teen, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We have created human being with the best of confirmation. So, first lesson is that you accept your partner as Allah's creation, you as Allah's creation, and you don't look for faults in them. Now, my brothers and sisters, just imagine if you stop looking for, for faults in your wife or your husband. How life would be? He's too short, she's too big, he's too small, he's like this, she's like that. You're nitpicking on Allah's creation. So what if his nose is too small? So what if his ears are bigger than yours? So what if he's got less hair than you? So what if Allah has made them in a particular way? So what? Are you going to be perfecting Allah's creation? You can't perfect Allah's creation because Allah says He has created you and I perfectly. So the first and the foremost lesson we learn in creating a family, having a marital spouse, is to accept that my spouse, just like me, has been created by Allah. And you know what I say? Have this attitude positive attitude. I am, Allah made me. What's your problem? If somebody says to me, you're not good enough, you don't look good enough, you're not handsome enough. Well, my brother or my sister, too bad. What's your problem? Allah made me. If Allah made me the way I am, I'm not going to change this. I'm, I'm talking about my physical being. I'm talking about my physical being. So don't look for faults in the person that Allah has given you, who is also Allah's creation. Many marriages fail Especially brothers are guilty of this. They keep on faulting their wives. Oh, you're not slim enough. The other person is more beautiful than you are. Poor sisters, the pressure on our sisters, not only Muslim sisters, but the overall society is tremendous to look in a particular way, to dress up in a particular way, to wear makeup in a particular way, to have a hair in a particular way. I remember my brother said to me, brother, I always dreamt of marrying a blonde, but my wife is not blonde. You know what I said to him? I said, you need your brain checked, my brother. You need your hair checked. I said to him politely, of course, in a private conversation. Hair color is blonde today. 
I remember Dr. Abdul Bari 20 years ago was all black. <laughs> Look now, he's all white, mashallah. I tell him, I admire his beautiful hair. Every time I see him, I say to him, I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to being like him, completely grey. Life changes, body changes, you will change. Today you're white, you'll become pet, you'll become slightly less white later on. This concept of looking for beauty in the external features of the human is nothing but a shallow, narrow-minded attitude that we all hold and we need to get rid of it as soon as possible. My brothers and sisters, there is no human being who is ugly. I want you to understand this. Physically, there is no human being who is ugly. If you think there is a human being who is ugly, you're questioning Allah's creation. No human being is ugly. Curly hair, blonde hair, black hair, ginger hair, whatever <coughs> shape, size of the body that there is, you accept them. Allah has created you. Allah has created your partner. And Allah has created your partner like you. First lesson. You understand the first lesson? The first lesson is, Allah made me. Accept me for who I am. I'm beautiful, alhamdulillah. Obviously, you're not arrogant about it. Allah made me. I'm humbled because Allah made me. I'm honored that Allah made me in fashion. Second lesson. Allah made my partner just like me. What does it mean? What does Allah mean by He made my partner like me? Allah made a partner who is a human being like you. A human being who will feel good one day will not feel good another day, will be happy one day, will be miserable next day, will love one day, won't love the other day. If your Iman goes up and down on a daily basis, my brothers and sisters, why do you think your love for your wife or your husband won't go up and down? Why? Why do you think you'll be happy 24 hours a day? You can't be, you're a human being. So accepting your wife or your husband as a human being with human features is the second most important principle for having a relationship, having a family, or having a space for your spouse to grow. Accepting them as like you. You like to be loved, they like to be loved. You like to be respected, they like to be respected too. You want to be honored, they want to be honored too. You want somebody to speak to you kindly, well you better speak to them kindly too. You come home and you scream and shout at them and you expect them to be nice and gentle to you. You treat your wife miserably, you expect your wife to be amazing to you. Why? If you accept your wife like you are, if you accept your husband like you are as a human being who needs love and respect, give them love and respect. And Allah will give you love and respect in abundance. My brothers and my sisters, second lesson is very important. Remember this lesson. Don't expect from your spouse more than what you can give yourself. Some brothers complain. A brother came to me and said, Brother, my wife, I don't understand her. She claims to be a Muslim, but she behaves nothing like the companions of Rasulullah. She does not behave like Fatima, does not behave like Khadija. I don't understand. Oh, Aisha. I said to him, My dear brother, I'm really sorry to give you the bad news. You're not Abu Bakr, you're not Rasulullah, and you're not Ali either. But how do you expect your wife to be like uh, somebody that you can't be yourself? Have realistic expectation from one another, respect one another, accept one another, because Allah has created your partner like you, you'll be okay. Second lesson. And then Allah says, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا I began with this. Allah has made us human beings in turn. Uh, Dr. Adil Salahi is a linguist, my teacher, so I am not going to contradict, and I'm going to be very mindful of what I say. The Arabic word, insan, originates from two root words. One means you belong to a family. Another means you forget. Am I correct? Arabic word, insan, comes from two roots. One is you forget, and the other one, you belong. I, I passed my test, I can't believe that. <laughs> when you have uh, linguists around, you have to be very careful. <laughs> Remember the word. Allah made you and I to belong to a family. Naturally predisposed to be part of a family. You did not come on this earth on your own, you came through a parent. And you won't even die on your own because when you're dead, somebody needs to bury you. We belong to family, we belong to a community, we belong to society, we belong somewhere. That sense of belonging requires, my brothers and sisters, creation of safe space called Sakina. If I ask an Arab brother, 
or a sister, where do you live? Do you know what I ask? Where are you from? Where are, what, do you, what, what do you say? What do you say when you ask somebody, where do you live? Aina tasunu, where do you live? Why do you ask somebody, where do you live? When Allah uses the same word in the Quran, لِتَسْكُنُ Because where you live is where it is safe to live. Where you live is where you feel safe. A safe space for a man and woman to grow in a relationship. A safe space that is free of abuse. A, free, a safe space that is free of threats. A space that is free of prejudice. Some brothers have this bad habit of using divorce as a gun, Russian roulette on their wife's head. I'll divorce you. She is terrified of living a life of a prisoner with a brother because Allah has given him the power to divorce. So he uses the word divorce anytime. I remember one brother said to his wife, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you a thousand times and I divorce your mother too. I asked him, why did you say that? Why did you say that to your wife? Because I was angry. You're weaponizing divorce. Weaponizing divorce, you immediately compromise a safe space. Or the sister says to you, I don't like you, get out of my house. Weaponizing home, no longer a safe space. Don't weaponize your home. Don't weaponize divorce. Don't weaponize children. Don't weaponize your in-laws. Don't weaponize that which is basic need of a human. And if you weaponize them, you've compromised on creating a safe space. Sakina requires absence of all of those. My home is equally mine as much as my wife's. My home is as safe for me as it is for my wife. I have the right to divorce my wife, so has she. If you don't mean it, don't use it. Don't use it as a weapon. You have an argument with your wife or your husband, you withdraw your children, you can't see your children anymore. Who do you think you are to even suggest such a ludicrous idea that I can't see my children? Who do you think you are? We produce children together. We have the right to the children. You have an argument with me. Don't use the children to get back at me. It's called compromising safe space. It happens in divorces often. Sisters have the upper hand. They have the children and they tell the husband, I'm going to get a court order against you. They go to solicitors and buffoon solic solicitors, some of them, will say, we'll get you a molestation order. There is no molestation involved. Get a molestation order. Poor guy can't see his uh, children for years. He has committed no crime. The wife is angry with him. Of course, if the husband or the man or the woman has committed a crime, if they are a danger to the children, then it is right that you bring molestation. But weaponizing means you're compromising. Weaponizing means you've taken away the concept of Sakina from a marriage. Marriage is supposed to be a place where you feel tranquil, at ease, peaceful. You want to come back to it every time you go outside. You go outside, you get tired of outside. You come in inside your fortress, your home, your cave, and you feel happy and content. You look at your wife, you look at your husband, you look at your children, you look at your furniture, even if they're meager. If you have nothing in your home, and even if you're sleeping on the floor, it is still your home. It's called Sakin. So third lesson, purpose of marriage, purpose of relationship, purpose of wife and a husband, is to create a safe space where both man and woman can grow. Grow together, grow, grow emotionally, grow spiritually. After marriage, most of us, mashallah, grow physically very quickly. It's because of a lot of food, alhamdulillah, contentment I can see. But emotional and spiritual growth is essential, otherwise you can't survive. Physical growth is good but bad for you. Third lesson is to create a safe space called Sakina. And by the way, some people say, so that men can live with her, with the woman, in Sakina. In other words, the responsibility of creating Sakina is on the woman. You have misunderstood the concept of Sakina. Allah is talking about لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Here, إِلَيْهَا refers to the marriage, not to her. And marriage is for both of you, not just for her. Some brothers say, it's my wife's responsibility to keep the house clean. To keep the house... Yes, it is, but what about you? You live in the house too. So my brothers and sisters, safe space requires a joint effort in every way possible. Emotional, spiritual, intellectual, financial investment, and that it becomes a safe space. Lesson number four. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً If you create the safe space, remember this, if you accept your wife as Allah's creation like you, <coughs> Allah says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ So the first part, the first task of accepting that you're created by Allah, accepting your partner also created by Allah, 
and accepting that they are like you, accepting that your purpose is to create safe space, that's your responsibility. The th second part is Allah's. Allah says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ And Allah says, I will put between the two. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ Who is saying this? Allah is saying, between who? بَيْنَكُمْ Between the two? مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Love and mercy. If you create the right space, if you have the right mental attitude, if you have the right attitude for a marriage, Allah will fill it up with love and mercy. And if Allah fills it up with love and mercy, you have nothing to worry. My brothers and sisters, many brothers and many sisters think, oh, I'm in, my, I'm in love with my husband or my wife. I fell in love and therefore everything is okay. Yeah, falling in love is good. No problem. You fall in love, alhamdulillah. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when two people have fallen in love, hurry up, get them married as soon as possible. If they don't get married, there'll be problems with everyone. When you're in love, lots of things happen. You start composing poetry, you've never been a poet before. You start singing songs, you've never sang songs before. Love is quite strange, right? I understand if you've fallen in love. But love is not enough to keep a marriage going. Love is not enough to keep a marriage going. So Allah says, you need heavenly mawadda and rahma, love and mercy from the heavens, otherwise you can't survive a marriage. Ask those who have been married around you. What keeps them going is love and mercy together. Fused together, enveloped and draped them together in a space that becomes protective and safe and secure. Allah gives it. Mawadda is the Arabic word, originates from Allah's name Al Wadud, which is Wad, which means essence of love, fountain of love, source of all love. And Allah says, I will give that in this marriage if you create the right space. And Rahman, Allah's name of Rahman is His name. He is the most kind, most merciful, most compassionate. And Allah says, I shall give the two in a marriage if you create the right space. Are you still with me? You all following what I'm saying? I've talked about four lessons. Number one, you've been made by Allah. Number two, your wife or your husband has been made by Allah and accept them because they're also human beings like you. Number three, your duty is to create a safe space. Number four, Allah will fill it up with love and mercy. Love and mercy again, ladies and gentlemen, my love on this earth but for my wife comes with agenda. But Allah's love comes with no agenda. Allah gives love and mercy to everyone. Your duty is to seek it and create. And Allah loves, Allah's love is infinite. Allah's mercy is infinite. Ours are finite. It is limited. When I'm upset, I sometimes feel upset and I don't want to love anyone yet today. It's okay. I said to my wife one day, I love you some days, I don't love you some days. Initially she said, what do you mean by that? I said, we better get used to this idea, the constant idea of loving somebody like the Hollywood, Bollywood romantic notion of love doesn't exist in reality. The reality is the simmering love that I have with compassion and mercy. That's what keeps us going. That level of love, love and mercy continues, not the volcanic love that erupts one day and it disappears next day. And the fifth lesson, ladies and gentlemen, Allah says, and there are signs. There are signs for those who reflect. What does, he, what does Allah mean by reflection? Here, the concept of reflection actually is to constantly evaluate your marriage, constantly evaluate your relationship, constantly evaluate your family. Evaluation means asking how are we do thing, doing things. If things are not working, can we talk and can we change? You know, it's a sign of madness to keep on doing the same thing again and again and again, expect, expecting a different outcome. You become mad. And yet people live in a marriage that is not working, that is stale, that is boring. Many people come to me and say, Imam, can you please tell us what to do? Our marriage is boring. I ask them, it's boring. Have you asked your wife or your husband? Shall we evaluate our marriage? What is it that we're not doing well? Can we change? Can we do something different? My brothers and sisters, the desire to constantly grow is the essence of a belief. Your days should be growing every day in intellect in spirituality, in love, in mercy, in family, in your character, you should be growing every day. Evaluation is, look at Rasul Sallallahu SubhanAllah. He said to Aisha radiallahu anha one day, Oh Aisha, I know when you're upset with me, and I know when you're angry with me, when you're happy with me. Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, how do you, how do you, how do you know? Rasul Sallallahu said, Ya Aisha, when you're happy with me, you say, I swear in the name of the Lord of Muhammad, when you are happy with me, you take oath in the name of Lord of Muhammad. And when you are upset with me, you swear in the name of the Lord of who? Ibrahim You know why? Because she is now dissociating with Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. was so mindful of the mood and temperament of Aisha radiallahu anha. He picks up the glass on the container from which Aisha was drinking water and he looks for her lip mark on it and then he drinks it from the same spot. 
giving her the indication that there is romance in the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. An amazingly romantic man. An amazingly benevolent man. Loving man. Constantly evaluating his actions with his own wife. And he doesn't need to do that. He is the Prophet of Allah, Rasul Sallallahu certified by Allah, given guarantee by Allah, called Rahmatul by Allah, the best of human beings ever by Allah. And yet he is worried about Aisha's mood and Aisha's temperament and Aisha's love. Why? Because a marriage requires constant evaluation. A marriage requires constant monitoring of how your emotions are working or not working. Becoming emotionally intelligent, my brothers and sisters, is the bottom line to understanding how to evaluate your marriage. Emotionally intelligence means you know how to control your anger. You know how to manage your emotions. You know how to manage the emotions of your, of your partner. You know how to respond to them. So finish off this uh, particular reminder for all of us, my brothers and sisters. If you put this into wider perspective of bringing your families together, your children together, your, your in-laws together, everyone who is in the family together. In Islam, we build relationship through two means. We build families through two means, marriage or we're born in it. You're either born in a family or you get married to a family. When you get married to a family, they also come. Your wife or your husband comes with a family and they become your family. It's no longer just me. Well, I'm married to you. I'm not interested in your parents. Well, that's the wrong idea. That's the wrong idea. That's a secular idea. Get rid of that from your head. When you get married to me, you should also be interested in my family. I should be interested in your family. Families should be able to interact with, with one another in a safe environment. And if I'm bringing up children, I should be also bringing up my children in a safe and secure environment that they can grow, they can become better day. So brothers and sisters, I've given you five key lessons and I've been told I need to finish. Lesson number one, you've been made by Allah and you're beautiful and your spouse is beautiful, accept it. Lesson number two, your spouse is like you, a human being who likes to be respected, accepted and honored. Number three, your duty is to create a safe space, a space where you can grow together, you can grow spiritually, you can grow emotionally, you can grow as a human being for yourself, for your family, for your children and for your extended members of the family. Number four, Allah will fill it up with love and mercy. And number five, there are signs for those who reflect, in other words, those who evaluate. May Allah give us the strength to be able to evaluate our marriage regularly, to be able to create a safe space for our families so that we can enjoy love and mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal and so that we can also accept one another and create the best of space that there is. Just before I finish, I've been told to plug my own book that I wrote a few years ago, actually last year. It's called 10 Steps to Getting Married and Staying Married. If you're interested, I've got some copies with me. You can buy them from us, inshallah. And if you need to talk to me about any aspects of marriage, you can get in touch. We also do a lot of marriage counseling and coaching for people who are struggling. Simple, simple request. Don't suffer in silence in a relationship, in a family, in a marriage that is not working. Seek help. Go and get help. And sort it out because every marriage, every relationship, every troubles that we have is solved. May Allah strengthen us in our Iman, in our Taqwa, and may Allah protect our families. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.